which are also into your hands. That Lord, give you the ability and the audacity to speak unto us. Father, let whatever that he proceed out of his mouth be a benefit unto us. Father, let us be imparted after his preaching. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you. We thank you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Today is the last of our Sunday, right? Last night when I was studying the word, it came from a total different direction. But I thank God that we learned this morning from the book of Luke and John concerning the bread of life. So what we're going to learn is about the law of sowing and reaping. You will reap whatever you sow. The whole year, the theme given to the church is, I will put my church and the gates of hell will never prevail against it. Remember? Good. This is a subsection that I've taken. At the end of the day, we're going to join into the last supper to become complete. Amen. We're going to learn about a law. Say law. 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 What is law? I'm not preaching. I don't like preaching. Otherwise, you don't... Uh, ask for teaching, I ask questions, then you ask me back, then uh, we fight it, then we go right. Uh, what is wet? Wet is unless than rainbows. Eh? Rainbows are rules. Wet is something different. Uh -huh. It's written in a book. It's written in a book. Mm -hmm. You know it's written, but what is it? Ah. A law. Mr. James, can you help us? What is a law? Uh, in my understanding, a law is a, a written document mm -hmm. which uh, tells what a country or a group of people should do. Okay. And when you go contrary to what is written, there is a punishment. Good. Thank you. For example, traffic light. Green means go. That's why she has red eyes. <laughs> you go for her creamy, you stop, then she stops. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This is a book of life. It contains the law of God. Amen. Uh -huh. Anyway. <laughs> is gravity a law? Yeah. Gravity is a law. Good. The law of gravity. The law of gravity. When you throw something upwards, it must come down. The law of rotation is there. Sinking is a law. When you put something in the surface of water, it sinks down. It's a law. Good. In much the same way, there's a law regarding sowing and reaping. So whatever that you sow, you reap it. It's a law. You can't dodge it. You can live to be Methuselah, but you can't dodge this law. You're going to learn something. Ready? Good. The law of sowing and reaping is not about money. <coughs> Most of the times when a pastor pulls up the pulpit, you are going to learn about sowing and reaping, everybody says change. Why? They think they are going to exploit money from them. But my must me, I'm not part of that. This is what I personally call kingdom economics. Put 10 euro in the offering bowl. I prophesy tomorrow you get 1,000 euro. It's a lie. No, it doesn't work like that. There's a way those things work, but not the way they say it. I'll tell you the truth. Knowledge is nothing unless you put it into practice. All that every day I teach you, I'm dumping knowledge into your system, into your spirit. But it's next word, as it is meet at good feet. If you don't practice this, it becomes nothing. You agree with me? To be a child of God is different from being successful in life. Somebody can have diploma A, B, C, D, whatever, get the best job, <coughs> get the best paid, drive in the latest Mercedes, he's successful. That doesn't make him a child of God. Mm -hmm. You be a child of God not necessarily means you're going to get all this as I mentioned. But the best thing is being a child of God. See under his feet, obey his laws, and make it up to heaven. That's the best. Good. It's all about knowing the principles of God, learning and applying them to make a meaningful life. 
That's a meaningful life. You don't go around hurting people, impregnating young girls and running away. This is not a meaning life, meaningful life. <coughs> you can be the best top scorer basketball like Christian. You can be the best uh, uh, football juggler like Nana here. Very successful. The girls like him. The other are three, four girlfriends. And then uh, you shoot this one, it's not me. You shoot this one, it's not me. It's not a meaningful life. But when you apply God's <laughs> principles to your life, and then you obey by them, that is what makes you a child of God. Amen. Amen. Good. Now, once upon a time, <coughs> let's open our Bibles to Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8. There was sin in this world so bad so bad that God regretted for making man. So he said, the age of man after this time will be 120 years. I'm going to use water to wipe the whole earth. Kill everybody. Hmm. There was a man who survived what I'm talking about. What's the name of that man? Noah. Noah. So that time, God killed everybody. Were there women who were pregnant? Yes. Were there babies who were sucking breast? Yes. Is God wicked? Yes. No. 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 Yes. no. Yes. His principle, God. When he laid his laws down, there are principles attached. <coughs> Most of people think prayer, prayer is the key as you sing. Prayer work in its own dimension and sphere. Principles and laws to exactly the same. If you have a, a, a diploma in accountancy, get the best job in the best office in the city, right, James? And you are driving a BMW, the light is red. What do you do? Why don't you drive up because you have the best paid job? That's how it is. The law does not favor nobody. That's how it is like. When it comes to God's presence, it's exactly the same. So when we are in God's presence, or you say, I am a child of God, he lays down his principles for you to follow. If you don't, he'll kill you. Mm. Say, the sin of the world is too much. I've regretted for making man. So in Genesis chapter 8, verse 20, after Noah came out of the ark, something happened. I'm not going too much back to Noah's story, because we know it already, right? Good one. So Noah make an ark. We all know it. He entered into it. But how many people? How many people entered Noah's ark? Eight. 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 Who were those? Uh, Noah, Noah yes. Mrs. Noah, yeah. three sons, Ham, Ham, Sham, and Japheth. So making, making five and their three wives. You see how it goes? Eight people were in. How many animals were there? Two of every animal. Fout. No. That's a bad Sunday school story. <laughs> How many animals were there in the ark? <laughs> the correct answer is every kind of animal was there. Amen. <laughs> Let's read Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. <laughs> Who is there to read for me? Genesis chapter 8, verses 20. Sister Pep, sister, please, what's your name? Portia. Okay. Portia, I think I'll give you my Bible to read my verse for me. Since you don't have a Bible. Or you want me to project my own there for you to read? Should I project it? There's only one way to find out if you are there. Who is there? Read. Read. Genesis chapter. 8, verses 20 downwards to 22. Genesis chapter 8, verses 20. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offering on the altar. Amen. 21. Mm -hmm. And the Lord smelled a sweet odor. Listen here. And the Lord said in his heart. And the Lord said in his heart. I will not again curse the ground with 
anymore. For I will not again curse the ground anymore. For the imagination of the man's heart is evil from his youth. For man's sake, he omitted it. Oh. I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. Uh -huh. For the imagination of the man's heart is evil from his youth. Pause. The imagination of your heart is evil. You see, it's not only the things you do that all season. The moment you begin to imagine it, when we are quoted from Ephesians 6 20, he can do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond what you think or imagine. So when you are imagining, that girl there, he sees it. You see, the imagination from his heart, from his youth. Are you old people here? Are you not youth? So whatever you are imagining. Don't look at me. You know what I'm talking about. Let's continue. <laughs> Neither will I against my any more everything live as uh -huh. I have done. <laughs> I didn't mention nobody's name. Verse 22. Verse 22. What the end This is where our, our, our sermon lies. Our teaching lies from you. Verse 22. While the earth remains. Say it after me. Whilst the earth remains. <laughs> we say it again. Whilst the earth remains. Mm -hmm. Seed time and harvest. Seed time and harvest. And cold and heat. And cold and heat. And summer and winter. And summer and winter. And day and night shall not cease. And day and night shall not cease. Please thank you very much. Sit down. Is the egg still remaining? Yes. Is the egg still remaining? Yes. Then that means seed time and harvest time will not change. The cold and heat will not change. Summer and winter will not change. If that be the case, yeah, then watch out. Let's see something here. Hmm. Seed time and harvest time, it will not change. Now, of all these four things we mentioned, Number one, seed time and harvest. Two, cold and heat. Three, summer and winter. Four, day and night. Man has power to change only one of them. But the other three, you can never change it. If you say a lie, let's bet. The second one, cold and heat. No matter how spiritual you are, brain tones. And it's cold outside, you can never blow it up for it to be warm. It can never happen. You can't change it. Can you? Yes. Did you say yeah? No. Day and night. No matter how you are, you can't change day and night. Seven o'clock, you saw the sun is rising up. Seven in the evening, it goes down. I'm, I'm coming to Joshua. It's happening for some reason. It has never happened again. So Lydia, can you change night today? No matter how early you come to church like Eric, you can't change it. <laughs> Summer and winter is only the same. You can't change it. When snow is falling, go out and say, Rabba Kata Soko Yama Kukuru. With uh, uh, snow, change to sunshine. They will change you to Africa. Whether you like it or not, you can go through everything I'm talking about here, but you can never change the last three. But the first one, Seed time and harvest time, you can change it. You see how you're going to learn. I've already said it. But each one of us here has a power over seed and harvest. Look at the sentence again. Normally we say day and night, uh, 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 sow and harvest. But in the Bible, it's no sow and harvest. The NIV writes sowing time and harvest time. But it's not like that. I don't, do you have your NIV with you? Oh, okay. Then I will say sow and harvest, but it's not right. It's seed and harvest. I will show you why. Good, in a minute. Now, if the, K and, uh, the, 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 the New King James says the seed, and this power will rule your life forever. Only the basis of this power is God's fullness and man's obedience. For this power to work, the seed time and the harvest time to work perfectly for you, it takes only two things. Number one, your obedience and God's faithfulness. Example, you have maize in your hand. 
about 20 pieces of names. And you have a pot front or a piece of land. And you know that seed time and harvest time will never change, right? That's the principle God has laid. And you put three of this corn into the earth. You cover it. You go to sleep. Day one, day two, you put water. Day three, day four. What will happen? <coughs> it will germinate. Your obedience is you putting the seed in the soil. God's faithfulness is He causing the thing to rise up. You understand? So if you have maize in your pocket and you say, hey, I have maize, you don't do anything about it, you're going to go hungry. Am I getting somewhere? Good one. At the end of the day, we're going to see what you have. Good. Next point. This thing we are talking about here, the seed time and harvest time, it has other names. Let me bring the names to you so that when you are somewhere, somewhere, and something happens, you remember them. One of the names is the law of sowing and reaping. You will reap whatever you sow on this earth before you die. No matter who you are. Two, the law of planting and harvesting. Anything you plant, expect to harvest the same thing. You cannot plant cassava and reap yam. La la. You can. I know for you, it's all things are possible. I know. <laughs> the law of consequences. Everything that you do has a consequence. So when you are stuck on somebody's tongue, be very careful. Four. The law of cause and effect. For example, here, I start shouting at you, hey, I'm not my friend. One day you shout at me back. It's a cause and effect. If you are with your brother, you will start at home. Whatever your brother do, whatever you do, one day you go to back at you. Cause and effect. Another name is the law of boomerang. In Australia, they have something. When you throw it as a weapon, you can throw it at whatever it is, it will come back to you, then they, they will catch it. That's how we call it. The law of repercussion. When you have a tennis ball and you throw it against the wall, it what does it do? It bounces back. The same way. Another one is this one. We call this one percussion instrument. The harder I hit, the louder the noise. You see that? That's the law of repercussion. The harder I hit, the harder I hear the voice. So when you come to church, everything here you are doing, it is there. You know why I like dancing here? It's good for me for mine. I don't go to gym. It's my gym. <laughs> Amen. Good. Again, the law of seed and harvest. The law of giving and receiving. What should I give and what should I receive? Whatever that you give out, Jesus Sandra, you will receive it. Very soon, we're going to see the things we shall give and the things we shall receive. Again, the law of breathing in and breathing out. If you like, decide to breathe only in. And don't breathe out. Let's see what will happen. It's like a breathe in, breathe in, no out. We need to need to be comatos. I remember in school, you go and buy KK. You park behind somebody's kitchen, they are making nice stew. You say breathe in, you take the smell of the stew and you break your whole KK and then you join it to your mouth. Mm, okay. <laughs> Again, it is called the law of generations. My father gave birth to me. I'm giving birth to a son. You also give birth to a son, and then we progress, then we go on. So we've got the law of generation. And that name is the law of faith. I have faith that if I put 10 euros today in the offering bowl, God will open a way for me. That faith I had in me, and doing what I did, it sure will work. That's one of it. The last one is the law of Newton's law of motion. Every action, there's an opposite of reaction. That's it. 
Yes. Hello, please. The law of uh, generation, uh, can, can it be another way of maybe my father or my, my, mom, my mom's side? They don't, they don't marry, they, they give birth before they, uh, they get married. Is it? It's not about marriage, it's about giving birth. Giving birth. Yeah. So your father has given birth to you. Mm -hmm. You by all means uh, get a child. Mm -hmm. Your child will give birth to a child. And it goes on and on and on. That's not to do with marriage. There is, these are laws that you can't escape in life. Listen carefully. You can fast and pray as often as you want. But you can never ever change them. Luke 6 38. We are going to read. Luke 6 38. There's only one way to find out that somebody is there. What should the person do? Read. Two seconds have passed. Three seconds is gone. Five seconds is gone. Who is there to read? Thank you, my hostess. Luke 6 38. Uh huh. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Uh -huh. Good measure, uh -huh. pressed down, uh -huh. shaking together, uh -huh. and running over, mm -hmm. shall men give unto your lap. Amen. The same measure, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Uh -huh. Amen. Look, 638 says, If, and it shall be given unto you, is that semicolon there or colon? Colon. Semicolon. Semicolon. Semicolon means pause. It's a comma, but a long pause. He said, give, and it shall be given unto you. Give, comma. Shaki, what did I just say? Give, comma. Stand up. Shaki, stand up. Shaki, ask me a question. I have said, give, and it shall be given to you. Ask me a question. What should I do? Thank you. Let's clap for him. Is the best question you can ask us. What should I give? Did the Bible say give money? Did it say give something? He said give. You decide what you give. Most of the times when pastors are preaching and they say give, church members face change. Everybody thinks it's about money. This day is not about money. Nothing. Especially what I'm concerned. I'm not talking about money here. What should I give? Whatever I will give, what's the next sentence that follows the, uh, 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 the comma? Uh, what sentence follows the comma? Thank you. So what I give shall be given back to me. You're going to work exercise right now. You're going to tell me what you're going to give. It can be good, it can be bad. You might give. What will you give? Say something. Think about your word so that we don't waste time. Give. What will you give? Money. Money. Okay. Give. And remember what you say. I'll come back for the second time. Give. Your time. Anything. Mention anything. We're not thinking about it. But remember what you say. Give. What will you give? Your love. Give. Your power. Give. Good health. Eric. Give. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Give. I said, Hell, good. Give. Remember what you say. I'm coming back, eh? Penny, give. I'll give my voice. Good. Give. I'll give my talent. Give. Give. Your plan. Your pen. Good. Give. I'll give my money. Your money. It's okay. Let's pause here. The next sentence says, And it shall be given back to you. What did you give? You get your money back. What did you give? I told you to remember. <laughs> what did you give? Your time. You get your time back. What did you give? Your love. You get more love back. Hold on. After, look at the sentence again. Look at the, look at the screen. There's a semicolon there, right? <coughs> you see? It shall be given to you. Semicolon. Long pause. E. It shall be given to me. Good measure, Imagine you give by biting. It shall be given to you. Imagine you give ayaka. It shall be given to you. Imagine you give hatred. It shall be given to you. Whatever you give. 
So, Mr. Lovama. <laughs> this is what I did. Give money. It shall be given to you. Give love. It shall be given to you. Give hospitality. Do how you pay me back. Who pay me now? It shall be given to you. One day you go and visit somebody somewhere, you miss your train, your last money will be gone. Shit! You want somebody to take you to his house for the night, you won't get it because who will pay me back hospitality? Mm. It shall be given to you. Again, give big mouth friends. What they are saying, they are working. It shall be given to you. Hatred or time, you will hate everything, and I'm here. It shall be given to you. Slander, say we can. You don't hear, you have not heard what has happened. Hey, they also talk about you. Residents, Akayon, Utimi, Dasa. Time. You can give your time. Eric is here Friday evening, 8 30 Sunday morning. He's investing time. When God says, because you give time, I'm going to give you time back. God will say, we're supposed to die at the end of 90. But because of the time you gave to me, let me give to you your time back. Leave 100. Is that what we are learning now? It's exactly the same thing. The last one is, learn. When we are learning, take your phone. You don't learn. The crazy way is coming. Have you understood the verse now? Give and it shall be given to you. Next question is, who shall give to you? Eh? If you God raise up your hand, let me see. Give it shall be given to you. Who shall give to you? Men. 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 Men shall God. That's why I like that whole thing. Men. If you say man, raise your hand. Let me see. Men will give to you. Uh huh. Shall men give to you? Is it better if a man? You know me. When I put the offering bowl here and you put your tithe, did you give to God? No. No. <laughs> no. Don't come. You say no. Eh? Good. But you are giving to man to do God's work. Amen. So in the end, you are giving it to God. So who will give it back to you? Man. 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 Wow. And God will cause man to give yes. back to you. Yes. <laughs> now you get it. I'm here. If you don't understand these principles, life will beat you. You don't know why. Good. I mean, are, are you getting somewhere? Okay. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, where we read, he said, See time. See is neutral. Everybody is going to give me an example of a seed. <coughs> seed. Uh -huh. Give me an example of a seed. A burro is a seed. Rice is a seed. Tomato seed. Papaya seed. Apple seed. You see? Seed is seed. <coughs> we get it. Now let's come home. Look at the screen. Seed is neutral. As you go around in life, you sow seeds. The seed we sow is Sadness is a seed. Education is a seed. Labor, a dry is a seed. Saving money is a seed. Laziness is a seed. By biting, we can perform is a seed. Hatred is a seed. Nana lover boy is a seed. And as you go around in your life, you are sowing those seeds. Don't forget, seed time and Harvest time will never cease. Let's move on to the next point. <coughs> if you don't like what you harvest, change your seed. For example, you sow a seed of bite biting. Oh, you didn't hear what Jeff did. Jeffrey, oh, for that guy. Jeff. Okay. You are sowing the seed there. It's going to grow. Anytime you put one apple down there, when it grows, does it bring more than one apple? Yes. Many. So the same way we talk bad about Jeffrey, you will talk about Jeffrey, but ten people are going to talk about you. You feel the pain. And that's show, Papa. That's how it is. So what have you been harvesting lately? 
What have you saying about you the last time? Ah, that girl. Hmm. That's why he, when he went, he said, he didn't fit the bottom. That girl. Is that your problem? <laughs> you are sowing the seed. Do you like the things you are receiving in life? Oh, why are you near you? You can not enter. Is there a crack buried? Is there a crack vacancy buried? On Kwan Yet Nay. When we must see how he gets job, he goes. On Kwan Yet Nay. Everybody pray, God listens and answers. If you pray, the more you pray, the worse the situation becomes. Does it happen sometimes? Yes. Then you take a look at what you have been sowing. So tell him, if you don't like your harvest, change your seed. Amen. Good. <coughs> the small exercise you're about to do has started. Galatians, that says verse 7. Let's go there. Galatians 6. Whilst you're opening Galatians 6, so let me tell you a story that I heard on the CNN. Galatians 6. Please sit down. Uh, let me share this testimony after that. We, we read the Galatians 6. There was this young girl. Her mother was placed on dialysis, kidney problems. And there was no money to pay for the woman's hospital bills. So the, the hospital decided to evict the woman. She go home and die. Had only three days to live. See the daughter, very beautiful daughter. She looked like Sandra. But guess that she, that girl doesn't like talking. Sandra like talking too much. So this girl wrote on a placard and went to sit by the roadside. Please help me. Everybody dropped by 50 cents, one euro. He needed ten thousand dollars. And imagine cold in the morning, she sit down by the roadside, quacha here, two euro here. When is it going to get up to ten thousand? Three days. In three days. So there came a gentleman who was lost looking for an address. He looked at the girl and said, Please, I'm looking for this. Can you help me? The girl said, Hmm. She folded the paper that he has written, help me. He folded it into a bag, pick up the few coins, say, Yeah, mister, what you are looking for is another part of the town. But it's a very rough area. If you go there dress chic like what I have done, the guys will beat you up. So I think you better wear my yas. A girl's yas that a man is wearing. Make yourself as if you're a junk. Because if you go to their place nicely, they will attack you. Hey, are you sure? Yes. So the girl risk you walk with the man to the place. When they married, they say, wait for me, I'm coming. After five minutes, the man came back. Said the girl, I found what I'm looking for. Please, you can go. The girl said, no. I have to go back with you because if I leave you alone, these guys, they don't care you well, man, they can even rape you. So please, let's go. <laughs> so the girl hold the man's hand, lean on him as if a man and a boyfriend, so that those around will see that hmm, he crossed it and he came back to where she was. And when she came, the man said goodbye to the girl. And the man crossed over to the other street, other side of the street, watching the girl again. The girl fold her legs, prick her placard and say, help me. People pass by me one another again. The man said, okay. Not knowing he has parked his Mercedes SLS McLaren somewhere. He went out there, signed a check of $15,000. Cross the road again and say, girl, the place you took me there, it belongs to my father who died. I'm supposed to own a will about 20 million US dollars. If I didn't even go to that place to sign the contract, I have not lost my inheritance. And because of what you did for me, I have got something better. So here is a check of 15,000. How much does a girl need? 10,000 in three days. 
In that instant, that man gave that girl 15,000. What did the girl do? She helped. She helped. She sold hospitality. She sold time. That's how it is. Read the Galatians. Let's go. That's the verse. Galatians. Be not, be not deceived. God is not more. No, it's not on the board. Ah. It's there. I think I'll paraphrase it. Okay. It's all right. Continue reading for me. Do not be deceived. Yeah, God is not more uh -huh. for, for whatsoever for man so shall be also it's, okay. Uh -huh. it's okay. The seven is enough. You see the word whatsoever. The word whatsoever. It means it doesn't matter what you sow, you reap. So ask the person on your right, what are you sowing? Ask him again, what are you sowing? Ask him, what are you sowing? Ask him again, what are you sowing? A second testimony is this. Let me tell you, then we bring, I will cut it short. I will not go on to the rest. This girl, they are very, very close. <coughs> Friends, oh. And she needed a kidney transplant. The kidney was kaput. Her own sister said, nay, mm -mm. if I give you one kidney, how am I going to suffer on the other? But you can survive on one kidney. Her own twin sister said, nay. Uh -uh. So her best friend said, I do, I'll do it for you. After all, if I do it for you, we can all live for some time. And if I die, we all die together. A friend though. So, the friend was called Lydia. And the other girl was called Samantha. So Lydia said, I will donate one of my kidneys for Samantha. But first, the doctors must check to see if Lydia's kidney will fit Samantha's. So blood test must be done. This test must be done. Whoa! They realized that Lydia had a hole in her heart, which about 14 days from that time they have discovered it, Lydia was going to die. Mm. Samantha was on the operation room waiting for the kidney. Lydia now has been discovered there's a hole in her heart. What is she going to do? A doctor said, because you have taken the courage to save your friend, today we give you a new heart. That same day, because Samantha was there for some time, he could survive it. But Lydia's own was very critical. So they operated on Lydia that same day, gave Lydia a new heart. She was strong enough to give her kidney to Samantha. What did Lydia sow? Selflessness. Not selfish, selfless. Galatians says so. Whatever that you sow, you get it back. If you invest time in the church, brother, you get it back. Sometimes if I hear you saying, I have to you can just more again, then I say, wow, it's not God who gave you that time. You can stay in your behind your school book for hours. Nothing will stay here. I've been a student before. And you've been looking in the book and you'll be smiling. Nothing is getting in there. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> But that one hour you are wasting behind that book, come here. By walking home, God can drop you the solution. Bam! It happens. I have I, uncountable times. Me too, I learn before I go and teach my students. Sometimes when I'm explaining things, I say things to them that I have never read in any book. But when we apply it, bam, it works. And later time, I go and find the thing I said is even in a book somewhere. <coughs> Is divinely given. So if you invest your time, your money, whatever you have, especially in God's church, brother, trust me, uh, not me, who am I? Trust God, you get it back. <coughs> Amen. Are you blessed? Yes. Good. Read the examples. You will not go to school. It's a seed you are sowing. 
Later in the future, you get no good job to do. You can't even speak Netherlands. <laughs> yeah. Congress, will you go? Come to church, you won't come. Give one quotation, go to heaven. You say, Isaiah, 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 before you realize you're in Isaiah's house. <laughs> Abortion is a seed. Young girl, pregnant. <clears throat> Abort it. Go. Maybe God has given you only one son. Show you the dream. And when you grow, can't get kids anymore, you blame it to your grandmother. It's a seed you sow. Amen. Oh, are you angry? No. no. Not giving an offering and tithe in the church is a seed you are sowing. The hardest is that in later times, you're going to have difficulties in life. There are some Bible verses here, when you combine them, it becomes a key to open a door. Now you practice to do that. A point in time, you get married, kids come in, now you are alone, so you don't see nothing yet. It's only like your yasha and your schooner and your book task. Papa buys Alice for you to talk. But very soon, you're going to step out of the house. You're going to be alone. That's where the power lies. Then God will remember, he said, hey, Galatians 6 7. Whatever you sow in my house, get back. Good measure. Press down. Shake it over. Shall man give to you? Man! Even the man you say you love, you're going to marry. All the money you have seen, you're going to take it and run away. Won't you be that? It happens. Pay your tithe. Let me save it. I'm going to use it for my wedding dress. Pay your tithe for my wedding screen for Zara. <laughs> you buy expensive phone, but you can't pay your tithe, but you will. God is looking at you. Nah. What do you say? The law of replication. The harder you beat, the harder the sound. You get it back. The best show, Papa. The only condition that affects your seed is that <laughs> do not get weary. When you are doing it, don't get tired. Just do. <laughs> Just do. Don't get tired. Continue doing. When the time comes, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 24. A man that has friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I told you a story about Samantha and Lydia. They were friends. If you want to be uh, uh, have good friends, be friendly. This one means that when somebody is doing a program, whatever, he invites you. Go. Wedding. Go. Funeral. Go. Go out of your comfort zone. Go. Don't say it's cold. Because very soon it will be your turn. Hmm? There are some of you, I've never met at any program before. Some of you here, expect you, you number one or so. Am I lying? It's true. What you push program? Go. Be friendly. So that when your turn comes, I some people will come to yours. My brother is at the back. He's Paul. We used to hang out in the discos and clubs together those days in the 90s. Uh, there is no, but if, if you don't invite me, I'm there. People know me, I'm there, I will dance. Uh, people know me because of that. I remember my wedding day, the church was so the parking everywhere asking. People I don't even know, they will come. I saw a seed of friendliness. The advantage is that. The more you go into people programs and invitation be on it, you are exposing yourself. People are seeing you. Ah, oh, that girl. Mm. <laughs> then they notice Connie. They will notice air hostess. Then David will notice the girl there. Oh, Papa, look at that girl there. Wow. The wow. <laughs> Before you realize you are married to Connie. Oh, hey, I'm you. Uh -huh. But if you stay indoors, Invitation, I won't go. How will people see you? How many singles women are here? Singles. I'm not talking about you, you, uh, Lydia. You. No. I mean, of age. Peppy, Connie, Sister Gifty, you're all singles. Go out. Open your idea. Move, Kobe. Eh? Go. 
You are so doing, you are exploring the market. People will see you. But if you stay at home and your time comes, nobody will come. Negative verse. John 4 verse 8 says, Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness, they reap the same. If you plow wickedness, at the more thing. You reap the same. Wickedness, bad things doing to people. You reap the same. Let, let me stop here. It's many. Next time, we take it as a Bible says in the morning before we continue. So, in the nutshell, the last one you take home with you, when you go and tell Papa and Mama saying that, Proverbs 6, verse 10 to 11. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little fold of the hands, hmm, let me sleep small. <laughs> so shall your poverty comes. No more pen now, you sleep too much, you'll be poor. <laughs> Cut you, I mean, divide your time. It's in the Bible, eh? Don't get too much. That's what will bring poverty to you. The best time if you want to be a millionaire, not millionaire as such, but a well to do person, yeah, it's a hint. I'm here. Start your day at 5 30 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. If you want to be a well to do person who can manage money, manage time, and be of influence. People come to you and borrow money, start your day from 5.30 in the morning. How? I, I have done it for years and I've seen what I'm talking about. Listen, one, what time do you leave home for school? Eight o'clock. I mean, what time does school start? Eight So what time? Three twenty-five. Maximum four o'clock. You are home. Five. You eat. You housework. Do some chat, watch some TV. Ten o'clock, you are in bed. Talk. Yeah, talk. But, uh, from the time you come to school to the time you go to bed, that time in between there, is it the time you do for your team, for yourself and your friends and family and stuff? Papa say, go here, go there, go there. What benefit do you get from that time? Nothing. You go to sleep. But, 5.30, your alarm is on. Your father will not send you to go alone at 5.30. Your friend will never send you what's up at 5.30. No one. Never. Hey. Yes. Your heart's lying. Your heart's lying. They are sleeping that time. Most of them. Okay. When you wake up that time, don't switch your phone on. Don't go to WhatsApp. And eh? that 5.30 you wake up, you just pray your prayer. Whatever that you want to do for your own self, start doing that at that time. By the time it's 7 o'clock, not everybody in the house is waking up and showering. You have profited from that time, even that one hour, for your own self. Take a pen and paper. This I want to do before I get 16 years and 8 months. Write those things down. How am I going to achieve this one? Write a plan. Sister, that one hour every day is going to add up to your life later on. And you're going to save money. If you say I like, try for three months and see what I'm telling you. Start today at 5.30. Hey. That means go to bed earlier. <laughs> cut the socialisms. Social, cut them. And use that time to rest. 5.30, wake up. And do things for your own self. This is for me. Papa is sleeping, no one gonna send me nowhere. Mama is not gonna say, go to the fridge and take a cocoa bring it. No, 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 no. Nobody is gonna send you nowhere. It's your own time. Yes, it's true. Even when you wake up, don't let nobody notice you are waking up, you have woke up. Well, start sit before your study chair, in your study table, and do things for your own self. Invest that time in yourself. This is not a new prophecy. I can guarantee that that time you're investing will bring the harvest for you. Amen. Amen. We have brought the teachings to a close. <laughs> Three questions. Then tell me what you said. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh -huh. Any question so far? The law of sowing, uh, uh, seed time, and harvest time. Any question? Yes. I have a question about the uh, law of faith. You say something like if you have, you put money in the offering, like, you say something like with faith, I know this money will do this for me. Mm -hmm. But what if I, I, I use faith and put the money inside, I walk out and I, I start feeling like the money, I could have used it to do something like that. Would I, because I use faith at that moment, work if I doubt no, later. No, 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 no. Hey. no. what you have done <laughs> is. And they have division of mind. The Bible says anybody who doubts, you should not expect that you get anything from God. But I, at, at that moment, I place it in the You acted on faith. faith. But then then continue like, in faith. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The, the biggest uh, situation where I thought that hey, that mother could have used to solve this situation. Let me give you an example. Maybe it can answer your question. There was a guy who had been praying for a car. He wanted a taxi to drive. Fast and praying, fast and praying, fast and praying. And then after one Friday afternoon service, he was praying about a car. He stepped out, hey, Brad James, what's up? Hey, long time no see, Charlie. Yeah, where are you going? I'm just going to pray. You see, if I can get the car, but now I have to walk home. Oh, okay, goodbye. What did he say? I came to 